talk to me about this tragedy to triumph because you brought it up at the beginning of the yeah, podcast yeah, where you mentioned it yeah like where you almost died man like that's scary so so just a quick rundown is um 2019 was a crazy year you know i um ended up uh going through a divorce and started a, a new relationship i traveled a lot and had a great time i went to some amazing places and um i was like man i want to try physique like um my girlfriend wanted to compete in natural body. She's an IFBB pro, uh, two-time Olympian, but always in lifetime natural, but always competed in a, what, you know, obviously is not a level playing field. The IFBB doesn't drug test. Most, you know, when I say most, I mean like 99.99% of all the top competitors are obviously um, on steroids. So, you know, that was a big disadvantage. And I'm like, why don't you compete in natural bodybuilding? You know, she just wasn't in that that world, you know, it's almost like a completely different thing, you know, natural versus non-tested, we'll say, or enhanced or whatever you want to call it. Right. So we had done a bunch of traveling. She was like, okay, I'll, I'll start a prep, but it was, it was very quick. And I was like, oh, well, there's no way, like I just competed in 2018 in bodybuilding. There's no way I can be ready in time. I was fairly lean all summer, you know, to look good for IG and marketing and, you know, to enjoy these tropical vacations that we went on. We, we literally went to like Mexico, Bahamas, Maldives. It was good times. 2019, man, was a fun year. I was like, okay, let's compete. But I only had a month. So I was like, you know what? I, she, she was like urging me to do physique. And I'm like, you know, what? all right, I'll try physique. And that's the only thing I could get ready for in time anyway. So I did a really hard prep. I went to Monster Mash. Monster Mash is cool because you can compete Saturday as an amateur. If you win your pro card, then you compete as a pro on Sunday. And then you're qualified for Worlds, which is just two weeks later. So this, this year it was in New York. So I was like, man, I'm, I'm looking pretty good. Like when I don't have to worry about dialing in my legs and my glutes, my upper stays full. The posing was, I actually went to see Omar Ventura um, and he helped me with posing. He's one of the greatest uh, men's physique coaches of all time. And, you know, specifically for posing. So he kept it super simple. So I'm a bodybuilder trying to learn these like fluid physique poses. It wasn't easy. But anyway, that, that, that was 2019. The show went great. I won the amateur like. I, I, it was almost not fair because I'm a pro already, you know, so I'm used to bringing this type of look. And then um, I competed the next day as a pro and uh, I lost by one point. It would have been my first pro win. That's yeah, the, that's yeah. the, that is the one that I was talking about earlier in the podcast that I, that I messed up the year, but yes, yes, go on. Yeah, it was dead center the whole time. It was a strong group of like eight pros, seven or eight pros. Johnny Dodson was in that one. This guy, Zach is the one who ended up winning. And um, it, again, it was apples, oranges. I was a lot bigger and thicker. But what happened is my girl competed on Saturday, didn't do well. It was just too short of a prep for her. Like, but it was good, you know, got her feet wet into natural bodybuilding, whatever. Anyway, that was the night that um, Nate Diaz and George Masvidal fought that Saturday night. And so we went out to some, some place and I was feeling like, I was like, you know, I got some room. I was feeling a little flat anyway. So I had a, two drinks. We were watching the fight. We go to Hooters. She ordered some wings. I'm like, eating stuff I shouldn't be eating I'm like literally gonna step on stage tomorrow I'm thinking like what am I doing I have two more drinks I woke up uh almost a little hungover I had four drinks and I hadn't drink in like a whole month you know and then I was like oh no what did I do did I, I, I think I spilled over I'm like drinking water so that was a mistake you know who who, <laughs> who goes and celebrates when you have a show the next day my right and uh anyway so I, I lost by one point but I was super focused um for world so we immediately fly home from Boston. We don't spend any time there at all. We just fly back home. You know, it's, it's a cross country, you know, because it's, it's East Coast and we live in California. I get right back. I literally land at the airport. We drive straight to the gym. I'm like focused. I'm like, I got 10 days to kill it and come in sharper and better for worlds. I'm going to win this world championship. Like, bet. I got this. And I was like, motivation is all time high. That was Monday. And then I did a workout on Tuesday, I think a leg day. And then Wednesday, I trained shoulders and arms. I was feeling great. I, I live a few doors down from a, a famous comic book artist. And sometimes he'll come over and hit me up and be like, hey, can you post for a couple different things? And then he'll take photos and then he'll go and he'll paint. He's actually a oh, painter. That's yeah, cool. It's pretty cool. So I, I've been on the cover of this uh, Bloodshot comic. I've been on um, this giant size X-Men um, comic where I've, I'm like every single character and you can kind of see like the way the muscles look and everything like that's me that's me that's me in different poses so I start I'm, I'm posing for him and I remember jumping on a table and I'm posing as nightcrawler and also my stomach is hurting really bad I had eaten like eight ounces of lean beef uh you maybe you guys call it mints or something <laughs> <laughs> no I don't but yeah maybe here they do 
Yeah, and then uh, and a and a bag of uh, frozen broccoli that I you know you just throw in the microwave. And all of a sudden, my stomach was hurting, and I still had macros left. And I'm like, at this point, I'm you know I'm in prep and I'm starving. Long story short, I end up in really bad pain. Feel super bloated. I try to take like Gas X, Pepto Bismol. I think I think that like you know whatever these home over the counter things, and nothing works. And my stomach is killing me. And I'm telling my girlfriend, I'm like, hey, you might have to take me to the doctor. Like I I think I'm dying. And she's like you're you're being a baby like you probably just bloat it like maybe it's, you know too much broccoli or whatever and I'm like okay and then I can't even do my emails it was like a Wednesday so I still had quite a bit of work you, a lot of my work is front loaded to the beginning of the week and I'm just like writhing on the couch and agony so she goes to sleep and around 11 at night I uh, I called uh I was I was in the Marines like you mentioned so we have uh the VA hospital so I called the nurse line the VA hospital and I tell them my symptoms and they're like, yeah, you should go to the emergency room right away. Um, it sounds like it could be your appendix because my stomach just felt super bloated and super painful. And um, I'm like, oh, okay, thanks. And I hang up and I'm like, I ain't going to no hospital. Like, <laughs> and like I'm in the middle of prep. I'm a week out from worlds. Like I can't, I already have my book, my um, ticket booked, my flight and everything and hotel in for New York. And then um I wait another hour and it gets worse. And I'm like, all right, man, I got no choice. So I wake up my girlfriend and she drives me. It's like 45 minutes away. And um, I get there, they do a CAT scan and they're like, well, we see an obstruction, but there's no inflammation in your appendix. So we think maybe you're constipated. And I'm like, nah, come on. Like I, I'm very regular. I go every morning, like yeah, my diet is so on point right now, you know? And then um, they keep me for like almost 24 hours, like basically until five or 6 p.m. the next day. They put me in a room in ICU and they're trying to give me um, like a suppository, uh, an enema. This is like never had any of this stuff before. And it's like very embarrassing. And I'm like, they're like trying to make me use the bathroom and I just can't go. Like I'm just completely stopped. This was already at the end of the night, like 6 p.m., you know. So my girlfriend's in the waiting room and all of a sudden like one hour goes by, the two hours goes by, three hours goes by. And she's like kind of getting frantic and she worries way too much anyway. I'm... I feel great at this time because I'm asleep. You know, they, as soon as they give me some pain medication, I don't care what they do at this point because I felt so much better because I was in like 10 out of 10 pain. I remember they touched my stomach and I was like, ah, ah like literally I wasn't being dramatic. I was literally dying. Anyway, so they had went in and my intestines were in a complete knot. And um, I asked them, you know, I, so what they ended up having to do is cut out about six inches of my large intestine um, that included... Uh, part of my colon and large intestine, my appendix, cecum, like all these things in there, reattach it together and then, you know, close me up. The scar is gnarly. Like I have pictures on my Instagram. Um, you know, what they do is they suture your abdominal wall and then they staple your skin. Luckily, this surgeon had just done a course on small incision surgery. So she was able to keep the um, incision below my belly button. Normally I see people that have this surgery. It goes like all the way up to their chest, you know, cause they, to make it easier to work but she was like very like try to keep the scar to a minimum and it's to be honest it's it's healed up quite well but you know having a perfect flawless physique with no scars or anything and then having this big ass scar was kind of like very uh disappointing like i was like man this sucks but at the same time um i was very grateful i was alive i knew that eventually i could get back in the gym and then i really didn't know like am i going to be able to compete again or is this going to look terrible on stage am my abs going to be all messed up now Am I going to be able to train abs directly? But luckily, I'm, I made 100% full recovery. I was out of the gym for two months. Fast forward, by the end of 2020, I was my best physique ever. Wow. Holy smokes. Yeah, because when I saw, when I saw obviously, the vlog that you put up, I was like, what? yo, my stomach started hurting. And, you know, I get like that, right? I'm like, yo, why is my stomach hurting? Because it was scary when I saw it, man. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, so this is rare. Complete, it was a complete knot. So I couldn't eat or drink anything. So I was actually in the hospital recovering for uh, six days, no food, no water. They just had an IV with some fluids in a, like a, what do you call it? Um, dextrose or something in the IV. Right. It was crazy. I just felt like I was wasting away, but you just get used to not eating at a certain point, six days later, you know? And I remember the first day they, they gave me some liquid calories, like a little Ensure and some clear, like some type of lemonade thing. And I was like, oh wow, this feels so weird going into my stomach. Um, but basically I was born without the mesentery tissue that held my um, intestines to the side of my abdominal wall. And at the time I was like 35 and I was like, this is like two years ago now. And I was like, why did this happen now? Like out of all the times, um, but it, there's really no reason. It's just completely random, but I was very grateful in hindsight 
at the time I was pissed. Like, come on, man, a week before Worlds, you couldn't, couldn't have my intestines flip out another time in my life. But I was grateful because um, I could, it could have happened while I was in Maldives, could have happened in Mexico, but it happened right. while we were oh. home. Happened while, you know, with all the, you know, things were in our control. I could easily go to the hospital. It wasn't like, you know, so at the end of the day, I missed Worlds. I watched the live feed at home on the couch recovering. And I was like, ah, I could have, I could have, I could have been there. I could have won. Um, but, you know, it's fine. Uh, I actually ended up beating the guy who won the 2019 short class. I beat him this year. He placed third. I placed second. Um, he looked, his physique was phenomenal this year. So it wasn't like, a, oh, he was off or whatever, you know, it was like, that made me feel a little bit better. My son was uh, like, oh man. So if you could have been there in 2019, you probably would have won. And I'm like, yeah, I think so. You know, so it's just, this is cool to, cause to see it was good. That was like a little bit of redemption, even though I didn't win worlds this year. I beat the guy that won in 2019 when I couldn't be there just because of the, the emergency surgery. Yeah, I was going to say you got your redemption, which is uh, in a way is nice. And yeah, you looked incredible, man. You know, I, I, it's understandable from where you're coming from uh, in terms of the scar and obviously it's discouraging, but to see the progress since that scenario, it's, it's truly inspiring. Cause not, you know, I'm sure there, there'd be people that would just give up, quit, pack it up, say, this is, uh, this is it. You know what I mean? And look at where you look, where you took it. So that's, um, man, you should give yourself a, a big, big hug for that one. You know? Thanks, man. I appreciate that. I think what helped me a lot is uh, in 2014, I had, I tore my labrum and I had shoulder surgery and I was actually at the gym for six months. Um, I could have went and trained legs, but I was like, at this point, fitness wasn't like the most important thing in my life. It, it was like a part-time job where I was doing coaching uh, part-time, but it wasn't my full-time gig or anything. So I, I literally just chilled for six months and did play shh, my cat. Sorry. My cat is crazy. I, um, I played poker. I played the video game. I hung out more with my family, you know, I, um, and, and then when I was finally able to get back into the gym after having surgery on my shoulder, it was only like nine months later, I won my, my natural pro card in bodybuilding. So I was like, yo, I knew that if I could come back from that and I looked pretty bad after no gym for six months and having shoulder surgery. So I knew this was, I was only at the gym two months. So even though it was a much worse type of, uh, injury or whatever, you know, it was harder to get back into the gym because you use your abdominal wall for everything you know support so um i had to ease into it even more so than my shoulder but i but i kind of had an idea that i would bounce back pretty quick and i did and i was super happy about it